Number one has a conjecture given. So it says a quadrilateral with one pair of sides, both congruent and parallel, is a parallelogram. So it wants us to draw a diagram of this situation. So we want to draw a quadrilateral that has one pair of sides that's both congruent and parallel. So when I make this, I'm just going to duplicate this so that it's the same size. And then anything since then, since I'm just translating this is going to be parallel. So mark it congruent and then also parallel. And then we can just connect um, the other sides here. So it says draw a diagram for this situation, mark the given information, which we've done. Then it wants us to just restate the conjecture um, as a specific statement using the diagram. So let's actually add in on this diagram some letters here. So A, B, C, D, I'm going to call it. All right, so then we can do um, so qu um, quadrilateral. A, B, C, D has um, A, B congruent to um, D, C and A, B parallel to D, C. Show that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Number two in quadrilateral A, B, C, D AD is congruent to um, BC, so AD is congruent to BC, and AD is parallel to BC. Show that it's a parallelogram. So now we're basically proving what we just wrote about in number one. So let's prove that it's a parallelogram. So let's first think about what we actually have to do to prove that something's a parallelogram. So remember that a parallelogram that means that we need to have two sets of parallel sides. And right now we have one. So we only have AD parallel to BC. So what we're ultimately trying to do here is prove that AB is parallel to DC. If we can do that, we have a parallelogram. So remember the ways that we prove that something that lines are parallel would be by showing that um, corresponding angles are congruent or that um, alternate interior angles are congruent. So we see this diagonal here. So if we could prove that this angle was congruent to this angle, that would prove that those lines are parallel since those are alternate interior angles. And so we're going to do that by proving that these two triangles are congruent. So let's start by talking about what we're given. So um, we are given that AG is congruent to BC and AD is parallel to BC. We also then know that, um, okay, so we then know that, and so what do we know if we know that two lines are parallel? So we know that um, alternate interior angles are congruent. So we see that this line is parallel to this one. And then we can look at this transversal and we can see that this angle and this angle are alternate interior. So we'll put that into our proof. So we know that um, angle DAC and angle BCA are congruent because they are alternate interior angles. Then um, we also know that the two triangles that we're trying to prove congruent share this side. And so let me get some of this off of here. Let me clean that up a little bit. So we've got these are congruent are in our proof. We've got that they're parallel in the proof. We did these. Now we know um, that that now we're going to state that that side is congruent since it's in the same um, since it's the same segment in both triangles. So um, AC is congruent to CA because it is the same segment. Then we know that triangle DAC is congruent to triangle BCA by side angle side. Um, 
then we know that angle BAC and angle um, DCA are congruent since they are corresponding parts of the triangles that we just proved congruent. And those are the angles that we needed to use to prove the lines are parallel. Then we know that, um, or we could say since alternate interior angles are congruent, we know that um, AB is parallel to DC. Therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram since both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Or sorry, not congruent, are parallel. All right, number three, A, B, D, E is an isosceles trapezoid. What, name one pair of congruent triangles that could be used to show that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So when we're coming up with these two triangles, um, one of the sides definitely, or the one side in each triangle needs to be a diagonal so that they can be corresponding parts. So if we look at doing this, um, so we could do this triangle, A, B, D. And then we could do, um, so if I go A, B, or sorry, A, D, B, then B, E, A would be another one. So I could prove, if I could prove those two triangles are congruent, which I can, um, then I could prove that the diagonals are congruent. So let me just pull these off of here so that we can actually look at those so you can see that we could prove that they're congruent and then actually write out, um, the triangles as well. So when we pull these um, triangles down, we can see, so we had um, this angle here, and then we had this side, and then they shared this side. And then in this blue triangle, so that shared this side, we had this angle, and then this side was marked. And so then we can see that the two triangles are um, congruent by side angle side. So then let's just name the two triangles. Um, so if we said EAB for that first one, um, congruent to DBA. And you could certainly have a different order for those. You actually could have um, different triangles as well. You could have done this triangle and um, this triangle as well. So these two would have worked in a very similar way also if you chose those two. Number four, select the conjecture with the rephased, rephrased statement of proof to show that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So we're trying to show that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. That means we better be starting with the fact that it's a parallelogram and then ending with what bisecting means. So we know it's a parallelogram and then we want the diagonals to be bisected. So look at the diagonals. So EG is a diagonal. Bisect would mean that we'd be showing that EK is congruent to KG. FH is a diagonal as well. So we'd wanna be showing that HK was congruent to KF. So when we're looking at rewriting this, that's what we wanna be looking for. So we can see, whoops, that A starts as a parallelogram, B starts as a parallelogram, C starts as a parallelogram, D starts as a quadrilateral. So this one automatically out. Then we want to be looking at the end to see um, what we're showing. So we want to be showing that these segments are congruent. Well, this one is showing that we have a triangle, showing that a triangle is congruent. This one showing that EK is congruent to KG. FK is congruent to KH, that's what we need to do to prove that something is being bisected for our statement. Now, in the proof, we would be, this is what we would be looking at proving that some of those triangles are congruent to actually prove that. But what's the statement look like? Letter C. Number five is triangle EJH congruent to EIH. Explain your reasoning. 
So they give us these right angles here. They give us these sides. Then we also know that they share side EH, which then if we look at this right now, we only have um, angle side side. We only have two sides in the non-included angle. So how can we prove that these two are in fact definitely congruent with what they gave us? So I think there's a couple ways you could do this. You could look at this as H. Um, so H is equidistant from J and I. So H is on the um, perpendicular bisector of um, J-I. And then we know that E, this is the distance, okay, because it's a right angle here. So this is the distance here. So E is on the angle or on the perpendicular bisector as well. So these would be equal. So I think that is one way you could maybe justify those two pieces being equal. Then you get side, side, side. Another way you could do this, which is the one I'm going to type out, is by saying that um, EJH and EIH are both right triangles. Um, that have the same hypotenuse and leg length. So they share the hypotenuse and then they gave us um, the leg length as the same. This means um, by Pythagorean theorem, they would have um, the same third side length because we could do the Pythagorean theorem in both of them using the same lengths, they would come up with the same length. So they would have the same third side length, meaning EJ is congruent to HI. So then that proves to you that that third side is congruent. So therefore the two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. All right, number six says select all true statements based on the diagram. Segment DC is congruent to AB. Those um, arrows mean that they are parallel, not congruent. DA is congruent to CB. We can see these tick marks, so we know that's true. DC is parallel to AB. We know that's true by these arrows. DA is parallel to CB is false. Angle CBE, this angle down here, is congruent to angle DEA, this one here. We know that is false. CEB, so this one here, is congruent to DEA. That is true since they are vertical angles. Number seven, which conjecture is possible to prove? So the four angles in a quadrilateral are congruent to the four angles in another quadrilateral, then the two quadrilaterals are congruent. So if we've got four congruent angles in a quadrilateral, does that force them to be congruent? And we can come up with a counterexample to this pretty easily if we look at a rectangle and a square. Each of these have four 90 degree angles and they are not congruent to each other. So this one is false. If the four sides in a quadrilateral are congruent to the four sides in another quadrilateral, then the two quadrilaterals are congruent. So if we've got the sides being congruent only, and so you could look at a rhombus, and then you could look at a square all having the same side lengths, and they are definitely not congruent to each other. So that would be false. Three angles in a triangle are congruent to three angles in another triangle. Then the two triangles are congruent. We know that that's false. Um, and if I just look at an example here of a triangle, so let me just make one like this, then I can duplicate this and it'll leave the angles the same. And I can see, so this angle's the same, this angle's the same, and this angle's the same, but these two triangles are certainly not congruent to each other since one is larger, so that's false. Three sides of a triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle. Then the two triangles are congruent. This is true. That would be the side, side, side triangle congruence. 